that the first thing that happened was not an invitation. The first thing that happened was to ensure that all things were ready. Are we together? That, that if the people did respond to that call, they would not come and meet a disappointment. This is a very powerful revelation because the profit of ingathering is that we stay with God and obtain grace to be sure that when the nations flow and come to us, there is something of substance. There is something of grace that we can communicate to them. It is a dangerous and painful thing when the nations rush to Jesus based on the proposition of the church. They leave their idols, they leave their vain works, and then they come to the church and there is nothing of substance to give them. The Bible says the character of the end time church will be such that before the grace for ingathering is poured out, the first thing that needs to be done is that there must be a feast, the banquet, everything must be put in place. And then afterwards, he will now empower the people. And with confidence, he will gather whether the lepers, whether the weak people. Because until that time, notice, the three excuses that the people gave in that parable were all valid excuses. Are we together? There was none of the excuses. Give us that scripture again. Luke 14. There was none of the excuses. The Bible says, let's go to verse 18. Watch this. Follow carefully. I'm trying to establish something. The first one said, I have bought a piece of ground. That sounds like responsibility. Do you know what that means? Everybody you are going to bring to the faith life, you will most likely find them doing other things that they find valuable. You will have to give them a message and a proposition that is more compelling than what they consider valuable. This guy has bought a ground a piece of ground so if you come to tell him come for the feast is ready he considers what he's doing more important more valuable and more profiting in his mind he thinks it is a stupid thing to leave your field to go and attend some feast somewhere so he says excuse me excuse number two verse 19 the other one said i just bought five yoke of oxen in those days, they used the oxen to plow the land. Agriculture was the mainstay of that day. Are we together now? Yes. This will be likened to what you may call, well, agriculture in our day, but say oil and gas, something that you know that was really very... How do you tell a man who has just bought five yoke of oxen to leave everything and come that all feasts are ready? And then number three, he said, I just married leave me alone are we together i don't know what can happen there i'm not ready to go and die and lose my family you are calling me for a dinner and i just got married valid excuses listen this is not just a parable it is one of the major revelations as to why many people are not coming to the house of the lord that these people before the church arrived with our evangelism message many of them were doing responsible things whether it was wrongly so or rightly so there was something that defined their passions something that defined their pursuit and so when we now come with a message and tell the person leave your job and go to the field leave this and go to the field they keep giving excuses because the propositions we are bringing does not have any worth beyond what they are doing until you present a Jesus a context of Jesus that becomes greater than a man's need greater than a man's ambition greater than a man's tea and bread whatever it is and let me tell you the truth Nobody will run to a God or a religion or a faith practice that seems to depreciate them, seems to bring them down. Are we together? That they lose their sense of purpose. They lose their sense of joy. They lose family. They lose intelligence. You know that the context of the Christian faith that is being sold to the nations has misrepresented Jesus because in a bid to bring messages like surrender and the rest, sometimes the imbalance is that we propose a Jesus that is not interested in any other thing about your life. The, and every day he's rolling around in church. No school fees for his children. 
not taking care of his family and the wife says what kind of a Jesus are you marketing are we together all these men had valid excuses one said I just bought a piece of property I'm a responsible person I'm building an inheritance for my children's children don't bring any religious fanatism and deceive me into creating a, a destiny of pain for my children excuse me another person will say listen I'm plowing the land because I do not want my family to be hungry in the name of loving Jesus excuse me the third person said no 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 I need continuity I don't know what spirit of death has plagued my family now I'm married let me be able to have children don't come and bring any fanatism that destroys my potential for continuity and the Bible says when he heard that he never said the people were wrong he was angry and pained in his heart he said now you go to the street go and bring ordinary people who seem to be hopeless seem to be visionless are you noticing that there were a kind of people that refused to come to that feast the major people who came to that feast were people who were dejected this is the reason why in most cases many people think religion especially within the context of africa was just a system to enslave people and throw people because the the narrative of jesus that has been sold is not a balanced narrative and so there are people who feel it is a waste of their destiny to come to jesus are we together now yes notice as soon as he met the lepers the blind the lame with speed they came to eat are we together when you tell a blind man when you tell a lame man when you tell a crippled man that they have prepared a feast number one they do not believe they are worthy to be in that dinner because of their condition and now when you have proposed a Jesus to them that he's able to meet your need and regardless what you have there is still room for you at the cross they came without complaining but the Bible says there was still room there was space that was created there and it says go to the highways and the byways he said use whatever strategy is within your power to compel them to come Jesus is teaching that means there is a dimension of the in gathering the fulfillment of this prophecy that will happen by compelling people the word compel is not just the word force against your will to compel means to give you an evidence are we together to present before you an evidence that swallows up every excuse that you have that God has mandated the end time church that if we desire to see souls saved and lives transformed we need to present an evidence before the nations that can make a businessman a poor man an unbeliever a habali see Jesus as a more superior alternative if that does not happen our soul winning 